Hello everyone and welcome to this new lecture. In this lecture, we are going to uh, cover an introduction to feature engineering, so let's get started. All right, so what do you mean by feature engineering? So machine learning algorithms require training data to train. If you guys remember, in order to train an artificial, um, in, uh, an artificial intelligence model or machine learning model, what you need to do is that you need to have training data and to train this model either in a supervised fashion or in an unsupervised fashion. And the problem is, is that most of the data that is available right now in the world, they are unstructured data. They have missing information, they are messed up, there are duplicates, they are out of, there is no schema for it, it's just a mess. So the point is of feature engineering, which is one of the most critical tasks that data scientists do, is to kind of clean up the data and make it ready to be fed to an AI machine learning algorithm. So feature engineering is a critical task that data scientists have to perform prior to training the AI ML models. So as a data scientist, you may need to first highlight important information in the data. You need to remove and isolate unnecessary information. So for example, if you find some outliers in the data, you need to get rid of these outliers. And as well, you need to add your own knowledge and your own expertise to, the, to alter the data appropriately, appropriately as well. So feature engineering is an art of introducing new features that weren't existing before. Again, you have raw data, and what you wanted to do is that you wanted to kind of tweak the feature somehow, tweak what you have uh, somehow in order to come up with usable features that will train the model and you will be able to have a model that's able to generalize too. So data scientists spend, and that's very, very important, around 80% of their time performing feature engineering. And I'm going to show you guys when we go to the modeling section, is that actually building an extremely advanced, let's say, deep learning model is not as challenging as you think. Especially, obviously, if you're building it from scratch, obviously, yes. But leveraging all the tools that you guys have available, such as SageMaker or any of the other, let's say, you know, like frameworks, like, you know, like TensorFlow 2.0 or Keras, they made it extremely easy to build, you know, like, like, a, like a network with millions and millions of weights. So actually training the model is not a challenging part at all. So the actual 20 is the actual data scientists spend around 20% of their time just training in the model, performing hyperparameter optimization. The main work <clears throat> exists in, okay, in the data. How can I give the model the real data, the important data, and how do I do feature engineering? And that represents 80% of their time. All right, so performing proper feature engineering is crucial to improve AI ML model performance. All right. So what are the proper questions to ask? So as a data scientist, you need to answer the following questions. First, what are the capability of the machine learning model that I have? Which features should I select? Can I add my domain knowledge to you basically use less features? So if, if for example, if I wanted to drop, let's say one column or two, and maybe add or come up with something new from the data that I have, can I come up with new features from the data that I have at hand? Or, and then at the end, what should I put in the missing data location? So sometimes we have some missing data, and unfortunately, we cannot feed in a model with, un with missing data. You need to fill in this missing data first, and then train your model, so that would be a challenging part. So that's why it's important to choose features that are most relevant to the problem, Adding new features that are unnecessary will increase the computational requirements needed to train the model, and that's why we call it curse of dimensionality. So you actually need to be very, 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 you need to make sure that you are not just, you know, like, yeah, I collected a bunch of data, and just to feed it into the model without actually understanding what's happening in the background, and without removing any unnecessary columns that you might have, or data columns that you might have. There are numerous techniques that could be used to reduce the numbers of features, such as compression, encoding the data, and we're going to cover a technique of what we call it feature reduction technique. It's called principal component analysis or PCA for short. We're gonna be covering it in the future. Basically, if you have, let's say 10 features, I can compress them somehow and make them, let's say five features using PCA technique or principal component analysis technique. All right. 
So let's take a look at a featured engineering example. Let's assume that I have this data. Okay, so you know, like here I have customer ID, here I have my customer name, here I have the location, and here I have basically the output or my target, which is I wanted to predict. I want to know if that customer has clicked on an ad or not. So let's assume that we have, you know, for example, you are a, co a company and you know, like, you know, you posted an ad on Facebook, for example, and you have collected data about your customers and you wanted to know, does, let's say, Bird uh, clicked on an ad or not? Let's say did like uh, Chanel, for example, clicked on, a, on an ad or not, and that's it. So if the customer clicks on the ad, that would be one. If the, if the customer does not or did not click on the ad, that would be zero. So that's the data you've collected and you wanted to clean it up. You want to do some featured engineering. So first of all, I let you guys guess first. Any, any idea what should we do here? Okay, so let's start with the first one. First, machine learning models does not accept any names like that. So first, I need to encode it. So I need to take USA, Canada, and France and convert it into a bunch of numbers. So I need to encode that column, okay? Second one is, well, I have a missing data point here. I cannot feed in a machine learning model with this missing data. And here, I have to do some formatting. Again, yes, I have to replace it with, let's say, one, for example, in this case. And then I can, here, if you guys take a look at it, you will find that basically these two rows are duplicate. So I need to remove one of these duplicate entries. All right. So just imagine you wanted to do that first before feeding in this algorithm to train your AI ML model. All right, so what are the feature engineering, engineering techniques available? Oh, obviously, there are tons of them. We'll try to cover as much as possible just to make you guys ready for the exam. So first, imputation, handling outliers, binning, log transform, one hot encoding, feature split, scaling, and many, many more. We're going to be covering all of these bare minimum in, this, um, in the next couple of lectures. And I, I hope I'll be adding additional uh, as well uh, feature engineering techniques uh, if I see any of these questions appear on the exam somewhere. All right. So the question is, what tools should I use to do some feature engineering? So basically, you can kind of go two routes. First one is using Jupyter Notebooks and using Amazon SageMaker. So if you wanted to do some ad hoc, for example, analysis, you can create your own code. And if you guys are you know, not familiar with that, please refer to the previous um, lecture where we covered Jupyter Notebooks and, and Scikit-Learn and, and all that. I'm sorry, my previous section. And we covered, we showed you guys a lot of examples. And basically, you can use, again, SageMaker and Jupyter Notebooks to do that. And on the other hand, you can use as well Glue. If you guys remember, we covered Glue before which to do some ETL jobs. So if you wanted to do, for example, some transformations and so on, you can use glue as well. And here, if you use glue, that will be repeatable and reusable application as well. However, here that will be ad hoc, you know, like if you want to do it basically every once in a while. All right. And that's all what I have for this uh, lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next lecture, we are going to cover Amazon SageMaker Ground Truth. And that's all what I have. Please enjoy AWS Machine Learning Certification course, and I will see you guys in the next lecture.